Hi, everyone. Um, we are excited to have you all in here today uh, to talk about making a plan. Um, this is a very important step to getting out the vote uh, all across the country. We know that people are starting to vote right now. Um, they're working on getting out the vote. So we're going to talk about plan making um, and how to do that and why it's important. And then uh, full disclosure, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties and we'll be working on loading a video with Sarah Gillibrand uh, to share at the end of the training as well. Um, but do we have our other slides for the training? Sorry, welcome. And we know that people are very busy right now um, in getting out the vote, uh, which means they're also a little overextended, which we know. Everyone's working really hard um, dealing with the election, dealing with COVID, uh, dealing with remote learning. I'm certainly feeling all of that. And I know that many people in our networks are also feeling that. Um, so we'll go in and talk about how to make a good voting plan and why saying, do you have a plan to vote? Probably isn't um, good enough. So we are Vote Run Lead. We are a nonpartisan organization. And today we're talking about getting out the vote and making a plan in our voting series. Next slide. I'm Faith Winter. I'm a state senator out in Colorado. Um, and I'm also the national program director for Vote Run Lead. I've been training women to run for office since 2004. Um, and I'm very excited to be here to talk about this important topic of making a voting plan. Mm. All right, so why is making a voting plan so important? Um, the first is it enables the voter to picture themselves voting. It creates accountability for the voter to actually show up and do what they've promised that they're going to do. It provides for early troubleshooting and brings out questions that need to be answered. And it calms any voting anxiety that the voter has. Um, and so when we talk about enabling the voter to picture themselves voting, that's about wh what time of day are you going to vote? How are you going to vote? How are you going to actually make the decisions about your ballot? It creates accountability because once um, you have accountability and you tell someone out loud, here's your voting plan, you're more likely to follow through. And then um, providing early troubleshooting and brings up questions that need to be answered. So perhaps the voter doesn't know where their voting box is. Um, perhaps they uh, spilled something on their ballot and they need a replacement ballot. Um, maybe they don't know uh, what days early voting happens. Every state's a little bit different um, in when early voting can happen. And then there's a lot of anxiety around this election. We've seen reports of voter suppression across the country. There's been reports of people uh, blocking voting drop-off locations, uh, reports of uh, armed folks standing in front uh, of ballot boxes. And so calming the anxiety and creating a plan is really important. And that's why it's so important to make a voting plan. The next slide. All right. So right now you have probably seen so many celebrity videos, right? So we have Michelle Obama out there. We have actors and actresses saying, go make a voting plan. Um, and while that's great, just asking, do you have a voting plan? And getting a yes or no answer doesn't actually lead to a plan. Um, and so at Vote Run Lead, we came up with questions that you can ask your friends, your family, um, and everyone else on how to actually create that voting plan that creates a real plan. So for example, when you're planning a vacation, you don't just say, do you have a plan for vacation? You talk about what hotel you're staying at, what flights you have, um, who you're going with. And so we're created this to actually help you get your network to make a very strategic, very specific voting plan. Um, and so the first is basically, how are you going to vote this year by mail, in person, or early? Uh, each state's a little different. In New York, the last day to request a mail ballot is the 27th. 
and that's an absentee ballot. Also, early voting starts on the 24th in New York. Um, and then asking them, what day are you going to vote on? So for example, if they say, I want to early vote, then follow up with, well, what day are you going to vote on? If it's starting on the 24th, and they can say, I'm going on the 28th because I don't have work that day, and I'm going with my friend, and then we're going to have um, a celebration uh, cup of tea afterwards, right? Uh, so what day are you voting on? And then where is your Dropbox or voting location. This is really important. Um, we've seen places in Texas that are actually changing where those drop boxes are. And a lot of voters might not know. So making sure that they're doing that research and walking through where is their drop box early voting location. Um, how are you going to vote, uh, educate on your issues? And that's really important. Um, as I said earlier, I'm out in Colorado. We have over a dozen ballot initiatives and we also vote on judges. So even though there's obviously the big race of president going on that probably people have made their decisions on, there's other things down ballot that they haven't made their decisions. So what websites can they go to? How can they get informed? What media could they be reading? Um, and then are you gonna bring anyone to vote with you? Uh, so for example, this year I voted with my friend, uh, Matt Gray, a state representative, and we voted together um, this year. And I filled out my ballot with my children. So who are you bringing to with, with you to vote? Who are you voting with? Are you involving your children? Um, what will you do if something happens to your ballot? So a lot of people more than ever before are voting absentee or voting by mail, depending on the state. Um, what happens if you accidentally fill out the wrong bubble? Or um, last election cycle, I got a call from a voter that said, I was filling my ballot out with all my friends and I spilled a glass of red wine on my ballot. How do I get a new one, right? And so what happens? Um, do you have to have an ID to bring with you to vote? And where is that ID? Do you have that? Can you bring that? Know the rules around voting. Um, are you prepared to stand in line? Right now we see a ton of folks out in Georgia um, who are standing in long lines. And so you see them bringing camp chairs, coolers with snacks. Um, if it's going to be a rainy day, they're bringing umbrellas. Um, so if there's going to be a line, how are you preparing to do that? And then do you need to request time off from work to vote? So these are some of the questions that actually get to a very detailed voting plan. And so now I am going to ask my wonderful colleague who is so smart and wonderful to come in and Paku, will you model a voting plan with me? Sure. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Paku. Um, and do you want to be the one asking me about my voting plan or do you want me to ask you about your voting plan? Can you ask me? Um, yes. It's great. All right. So Paku's in Minnesota. Um, so Paku, this year on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you to vote? I'm like a 20. That's excellent. That's, that's very exciting. I'm very excited to vote too. Um, so in Minnesota, are you going to be voting in person early or by a mail ballot? I'm actually going to vote in person and I'm going to vote on election day. Okay. Um, yeah, even though I don't want to, I feel like I'm really concerned about whether my vote will be counted. So I want to just, I want to just, you know, do the thing that I feel is going to be the, the most secure. Awesome. And do you, um, do you know where your voting location is? Do you know where? I do. It used to be um, the Sibley Park Rec Center right next to my house, but they actually um, changed it. So now it's at, at the, um, the Hawthorne High School. So I, I know where I'll be going. Awesome. So you're going to Hawthorne High School on election day. What time of day are you going to go? I think I'm going to go in the morning um, because I might um, be helping out a campaign later in the day. So I'm going to go in the morning right when it opens at seven o'clock. That's great. So you're waking up early, you're going at 7 a.m., you're going to Hawthorne High School. Um, do you think there's going to be lines when it opens up? Um, I hope not. Um, it's the same place that I want to vote for the primary and the parking is a little bit away. So I hope not. I hope I can just quickly go in and not in and out. Excellent. And um, just in case there are lines, will you be will you have the time to stand in line and will you be prepared to do that? I think so. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll wake up like at six o'clock and I'll be there before they open up and then I'll, I'll just be able to go in. But I think I'll have like an hour, two hour um, a leeway. 
That's great. And are you bringing anyone with you to vote? No, it will just be me. Excellent. And you, of course, you'll bring your mask, be ready to socially distance since you're voting in person. Um, and have you done all your research on the issues that will be on the ballot in Minnesota? Yes, I've definitely done my research. Um, I care a lot about, you know, racial justice and equal justice. And I, I, I have the person I want to vote in mind. That's excellent. And so that's an example of how to make a very detailed voting plan um, with a voter. And so don't, I have one quick question for you, Paku. How did that feel actually picturing yourself voting? Yeah, I know. Actually, you know, it's so weird, Faith, but you asking me those questions, I I could imagine myself waking up and like, it's going to be, it's going to be, I was thinking in my head, it's going to be really dark. So I definitely need to wear maybe some, my bright, um, my, my lighter colored coat, because even walking to the gym, I know that it's like a parking lot. And so I want to make sure that I'm safe. So I was thinking definitely of that. And then when you asked me like, will you have enough time? I was thinking, oh crap, like I do need to definitely make sure that my phone is fully, uh, fully um, batteried because I might have to text someone at the campaign to say like, hey, I'm going to run late. So yeah, it definitely got me thinking about like plan B, plan C. Yep. And that's really important because we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but having the voter picture themselves doing the actual act is really important and making sure they come up with those contingency plans, right? So Paku said she doesn't think there's going to be a line, but I asked her what would happen um, if there is a line. And I love that you were picturing what you were going to wear because I, since 2004, have always voted in my vote friendly t-shirt, which I have on. And so I always wear my vote friendly t-shirt on election day. Um, and so that's how you can make a detailed voting plan with people in your life. And we know that this is the most important election um, that we've had in a long time. And at Vote Run Lead, we know that um, if we want the leaders we deserve, that we have to show up and vote. And one of the ways that we can amplify our power as women is not just making our own voting plans, but making voting plans with people in our lives. All right, next slide. Um, and then a good piece of advice um, is to add in some social pressure to voting too, right? This adds to the accountability. And that doesn't mean being really aggressive and being like, you better put your ballot or your selfie on Facebook or I'm going to follow up, right? But um, things to say that kind of add in that, add, that extra accountability are things like, thank you for being a reliable voter. Um, you don't want to miss out on voting this year, right? So you've done it in the past. You don't want to miss out on this year. Continue your streak, right? Get your gold star. Um, your community is having record turnout. Can we count on your vote? And so this is like all your neighbors are voting, right? You don't want to be the one that doesn't show up. That seems weird. Um, and that adds in some accountability and social pressure. Oh, can we go back? Um, not who you vote for, but your vote is public record. So some people don't know that. Um, and this is, you know, this is getting a little bit deeper into social pressure. Not everyone's comfortable doing that, which is fine. But you can't tell who people vote for, but you can tell if they showed up. Um, and we're going to be calling our alumni after the election to find out about their voting experience. So this is saying, we're going to know if you voted. It's public record. Um, and then finally, all your neighbors are voting. Can we count on your vote? Um, so after you make the voting plan um, in a way that feels comfortable, just add in a little bit of social pressure because it adds to the accountability to make sure that the voter um, actually shows up. And we have this in a worksheet that we just dropped in the chat box. Um, and that worksheet will also be online later. Um, so make sure that you check out that worksheet because you don't have to memorize all of these questions and ways to add in social pressure just from today. All right, next slide. And uh, here's some New York specifics because part of making a voting plan um, is really understanding what's happening in the states. And so some New York specifics are, is voting starts October 24th, early voting. So this is where you can show up in person at an early voting location and vote early. Um, so let's say you have a big presentation on November 3rd at work. You don't think that you'll be able to go vote that day. You don't want to stand in line. You want to be thinking about your presentation. Um, definitely vote early. So early voting is open to everyone in New York starting October 24th. The last day to request an absentee ballot is October 27th. And then each state actually has different rules about when ballots have to be postmarked by. And in New York, they have to be postmarked by November 3rd. 
And I definitely drop it off earlier. You wanna make sure your vote's counted. You don't wanna be dropping your ballot off at some box that you don't know if it's gonna be picked up the next day on November 4th and actually processed. Um, and so plan on if you're dropping it off or putting the mail and making sure that it gets in on time and postmarked by November 3rd to ensure that it gets counted. All right, next slide. Um, so we are going to skip our um, breakout rooms because this is a small training because we know um, that there is a lot going on and a lot of people are doing a lot of GOTV. But I just want to open it up either in the chat box or you can unmute yourself if there's any questions on how to make a good voting plan. Awesome. All right. So no questions. Um, I am faith at voterunly.org. If a question comes up later, always feel free to email me. Um, and then real quickly, what I wanna do is ask everyone to put in the chat box um, who they're making a voting plan with uh, and who, uh, in, and we'll give a gold star for the most creative answer. Um, so for example, if you could put two people that you're making a voting plan with, um, and so I am gonna make a voting plan with my hairdresser because uh, I know she's really excited to vote this year, but she's usually not very politically involved. So she probably doesn't have all the answers the way my political friends are. So I'm gonna make a voting plan with my hairdresser. And then um, I'm also gonna be making a voting plan with the mom that's the head of my kids' PDAs. Um, because I know that uh, she's excited to vote, but she's super busy running a PTA. So I'm gonna make sure that she has a plan to vote. Um, so we have people saying that they're going to make a voting plan with their neighbors, which is great. It's a good way to connect with your neighbors, meet your neighbors. Um, oh, that's good. Make a vote plan with your teenage neighbors who are at college, right? Because for the first time voters, making a voting plan is especially important because we know that when young people vote early in their life, they're likely to be reliable voters their entire life. And so making that plan with young voters and first time voters is really important. Um, and then uh, uh, making plans with uh, folks that you know abroad, that's super important. My friend in Australia just voted and turned it in and I helped her make a voting plan. Um, neighbors, elderly neighbors, um, making a plan with your mom and your best friend. Um, yeah, so these are all really good examples and so, and when you uh, open up our worksheet, we ask you to think of 10 people that you're willing to go out and make a voting plan with uh, to make sure that you're turning them out. So um, think about that and who that you are making a voting plan with. And um, we know that it really does have an impact on turnout because the number one pe reason people vote is someone in their life asked them and helped them do it. It's not because they got a piece of mail. It's not because they got 2000 texts. It's not because they got a phone call. It's actually because someone they know and love and trust asked them and helped them do that. Um, and so this really does matter. Um, we have someone making a plan with their four cousins who live in neighboring counties. That's fantastic. Um, so I know you're gonna have a huge impact when you go back into your community and make these voting plans. So thank you everyone for sharing. All right, next slide. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Mark to see, do we have, well, I'll just ask Mark, do we have the video loaded? Um, and so we also just want to share that Vote Run Lead is a very nonpartisan organization. We trust women first and trust women more um, than politics. And we want Vote Run Lead to be a place where women grow their own leadership regardless of their views and a safe place for everyone. And so the information, views, and opinions expressed in this presentation and any accompanying materials are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of a run lead. Um, we are a nonpartisan 501c3 organization that does not support or endorse candidates, um, but we're also very excited that Sarah Gillibrand was willing to share a little bit about her personal voting plan. All right, we're gonna load the video. It's just gonna be just a second.
Is anybody still waiting to vote? Because I voted already. There's a lot of people waiting to vote still. Um, so some people definitely want to vote on election day. Um, some states you haven't been able to vote in yet. Um, I voted in Colorado, um, but there's, uh, I would say, so the Colorado numbers are about a third of the people we expect to vote have voted. So two thirds still haven't. And we have more early voting than a lot of other places. Um, so in many states, um, there's a lot of voting still left. Florida just opened up early voting, I think two days ago and had about a million people vote um, in the first couple of days. And so there's a lot of excitement, but there's still, um, and part of getting out the vote, which we do have a training next week on what women leaders should be doing in the last four days of the election, on election day and after election day. Um, and part is uh, not buying into the narrative that so many people have voted that their vote doesn't matter, right? And so there will be a lot of media stories about how high voter turnout is um, and how, um, how everyone's voting. And then what that does is it creates this idea, well, if everyone else has voted, it's not that important that I do. Um, and so one of the things that we need to do is combat that narrative that actually every vote counts. Um, in fact, in Colorado, in a city council election, one of our vote run lead alums was running. Um, and in her race, her race was literally tied. Um, and they did a recount and it came out tied and they flipped a coin to see who'd be on city council and she lost a coin toss. And so now this vote run lead alum's not on her city council. Um, and it was just one more vote. So we have to keep going and all those late voters, um, especially in states with long ballots, um, voters tend not to vote if they don't have the information. So Colorado is a ballot initiative state. We have a lot of ballot initiatives. We also vote for judges. So, and that's hard to get information on. So it's also helping those voters find that information because they might not, they might know at the top of the ticket who they're voting for, but then get stymied in um, looking down ballots. So yes, lots of votes to turn out still. All right. All right, we're gonna try to play the video. Here we go. Cool. Is it just me or, or is the video, the, the, the sound yeah. not working? Yeah, we can't hear it. Technology is always great until it's not great, right? Your advocacy, it works, it's so important. Um, I have a plan for voting. In fact, I already voted. I got my absentee ballot because I was afraid we'd be still a DC voting because uh, which would not make a plan. So I got my absentee ballot. And I filled it out uh, yesterday or two days ago, and I put it in the mail. I put in two stamps to make sure it got there. But you, you only do need one. But I did two. And you know, Senator, we've just been doing a lot of get out the vote phone calls to vote run lead alums from across the country, and in particular, New York State. And we found that more and more voters are self-actualizing the importance of voting and voting early. Yes. And you know, the same things that I'm asking you today, I know we've been asking them to ask their networks yes. about their voter plan and things of that nature. And so I'd be curious to know, who else have you asked about their voter plan to make sure they're getting out to vote? Well, my husband, um, this is an important election for Jonathan, and he did his absentee ballot too. He sent it out. He didn't get his back yet. So as soon as his gets back, I will make sure he gets his vote finished. Um, and we're going to make sure that everyone we know and love have a plan. I talked to my mom about her plan. Um, she wants to go in person. She's very concerned that people are trying to mess with the election. So she wants to be there. So despite COVID, she's not afraid. She wants to go in person. So that's her plan. Um, and I've talked to my sister and my brother and all my friends, and we all have plans to go vote, uh, to either do it early by mail or to go in person. And I think it's important to, to whatever you're comfortable with. If you don't want to go, uh, if you don't want to go in person because of COVID, well then request your absentee ballot. Um, if you can vote early, vote early because there's going to be less lines and there'll be more time. So whatever makes sense for you is how you should vote. And why is creating such a detailed plan so important? 
because you don't want to leave it to the last minute. You do not want to leave it to the last minute. I once left voting to the last minute and I got stuck at work and I missed my chance to vote. I was a young lawyer working all the time in New York City and I said, oh, I'll be done with my work by, by eight and the polls close at nine, I can make it. I was stuck at the office till 11 and I was so angry. So having a plan really works and voting early really works. Um, it makes a difference because we don't wanna lose our chance to vote because maybe we don't feel well that day or maybe you know your car doesn't work. Um, having a plan, having a backup is really important. Yeah, no, I think that that's key. And the more people that we've been talking to as well have been sharing more about their plans and who they're talking to and why they definitely want to have as detailed as a plan as you laid out and the importance of that. Um, and then, you know, there has been so much talk on the news about early voting um, or uh, sending in your ballots and how things aren't safe and all of these different things. What are some tips that, uh, that you can share with our alumni out there to, to calm and suit their, their nerves around voting, if there are any. So, you know, the good news is we're in a different place than we were in 2016. Um, right now, the Department of Defense, and you've read about this in the, in the newspaper, um, has been subverting attacks from all sorts of bad actors, from Russia, from China, from Iran, and they are not only finding it, they're shutting it down. So we have more defenses up than ever before. And we know that a lot of people, the Republican Party in particular, has done dirty tricks in local elections and around the country. And so we have lawyers who are going to work on a pro bono basis across the country to make sure no, no undermining of people's right to vote. Um, we are going to make sure that all the strategies that some people have used to suppress the vote in places like Georgia, We've, un, un, we've, we've tried to unwind all that. People like Stacey Abrams um, has used Fair Vote as her platform to guarantee people's right to vote is preserved and protected. So we're more prepared today than we've ever been to protect the right to vote. And that means just you take it seriously, your elected leaders are taking it seriously. And for those who are political and are trying to undermine your right to vote, we're gonna fight against them. Mm -hmm. And are there any last minute tips that you have for our, our alumni that's out there around um, just in, about the process itself, just in case they're like, yeah. again? Well, here you go. Here's an important lesson. If you see voter suppression, you see someone scaring off voters or intimidating voters, or you get one of those emails we just read about saying you better vote for Trump or else, let someone know there's a, a, there's a hotline for election protection. I'm going to read it to you so you have it. It's 1-866-OUR-VOTE, O-U-R-V-O-T-E, which the numbers, if you don't have letters on your phone anymore, which is true for a lot of people, the number is 866-687-8683. 1-866-687-8683. Report it. We don't want anybody to get away with anything. Right. No, thank you so much, Senator, for saying that, because that's it's crucial. We want to make sure that we have uh, all the information necessary in case we see any type of voter suppression yeah. or any kind of business out there so we can report that. Um, and then, you know, just a, a, another question. So as people are doing mail-in voting and getting ballots, what happens if they spill something on their ballot? If they spill, you know, some people said wine or off of Minnesota. Glass of wine, yeah, that's happened. Right? Okay, yeah. so here we what go. You um, your safest bet if you're a New York voter is to call the New York State Board of Elections. Uh, that's 1-800-367-8683 to request a new ballot and alert election workers yours is damaged. Call as soon as possible so you have time to get the new ballot. If you've already mailed it in, the good news is if they can read your vote, they'll record it. They, they only don't record it if they can't read what you voted. So if there's just a little bit of coffee or why not, you probably can read it. And so if you already sent it in, don't worry about it. Uh, as long as you could read it, that means the, um, the uh, Board of Elections can read it. Great. I actually want to go back to the point that you made around voter suppression. What are types of forms of suppression that someone may see that they should report? So, for example, um, <clears throat> some, sometimes what they'll do is they'll intimidate you, stand too close to you. 
as if they're trying to see how you're voting. They are not allowed to do that. Um, sometimes they will create very long lines. There's nothing you could do about that, but you should report it so that we are focused on that particular uh, ballot uh, access the next time. Um, sometimes you'll go to vote and they'll say, we don't have your phone. We, we don't have your we don't have your name or mm. that's the wrong address or you're at the wrong location. If they try to stop you from voting, ask for a provisional ballot and fill it out and hand it in. You want to vote no matter what they say, because you might go to that other polling lo location and they'll say wrong location. It's happened to voters that went to three or four locations, never got to a place that said it was their location and were denied the right to vote. Mm. So the most and I know this all from Stacey Abrams. The most important thing you do is if you show up and they say you can't vote for some reason, demand a provisional ballot. They must allow you to vote. Great. No, thank you for saying that because suppression can come in different forms, even the, the slightest thing. So laying that out is, is incredibly helpful. Yeah. And, you know, as we, uh, you know, talk a little bit more, why is it so important for women to vote, particularly uh, women of color, young, mm -hmm. old, to, to vote in this year's election? So it's really important to make sure you are able to elect people who share your values. We still don't have 51% of women in Congress. We still don't have enough women of color and people of color in Congress. So what's important is that because someone just like you is not representing you there, find someone who shares all your values and that person can be your proxy. So it's really important. And that's why I think Vice President Biden and Kamala Harris are such a great ticket combined they represent all our values and they really are going to push our agenda forward. So I feel faith and trust in them to vote for them. Um, find people who share your values. And someday, if, if you have it in your soul, you should run yourself um, because we want more representation ultimately in Congress. We want Congress to look like America. And the truth is, there may be plenty of white men who have the same priorities as you and I do. But they haven't lived our lives, and so they may not know what the sting of racism feels like. They may not know what misogyny actually feels like. They may not know how COVID disproportionately harmed people of color, women of color, and women who work. It's unbelievable the impact it's had on, disproportionately on communities of color. And so we need to make sure that our voices are heard. And that's why voting as a woman and as a woman of color is so important. Uh, because we need ultimately more diversity in Congress. And between now and then, at least, you can have somebody who shares your values. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Senator. Any, any final thoughts that you have about voting this year beyond that you want to leave with us? Um, just that you matter. Um, I think during COVID, we're all feeling so dislocated and detached and, and depressed and sad and, 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 and helpless. Do not feel helpless. This is your moment where you can make the difference. You getting yourself to that poll, you filling out an early ballot, you voicing your opinion and making sure everyone you know and love is voting to, that's power. And you have as much power in that voting booth as the wealthiest mogul in the world. You have as much power as anyone and your voice really does matter. And when it comes down to organizing and getting the whole community behind an idea, women and women of color thrive. They are good at it, they know what to do, and they know how to bring people together. So know your value in this moment to deliver these votes and your whole community behind you so that we elect a new president and flip the U.S. Senate and hold the U.S. House. Then we can govern. And then we can guarantee things like national paid leave and equal pay for equal work and affordable daycare and universal pre-K and health care is a right and a new COVID relief package so we can help all the people who are out of work and are struggling to put food on the table. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Senator Gillibrand, for being with us today. Thank you so much for every all the work that you're doing, you know, in D.C., back in New York State, and for everything that's happening in, um, in the country. Thank well, you so thank much. you, Juanita. You are inspiring me and inspiring us all. And thank you to Vote Run Lead for your extraordinary work and advocacy. You really make a difference. Thanks. Great. Hope you all um, enjoyed that video and hearing from Sarah Gillibrand.
Um, and just a reminder that Vote One Lead is a nonpartisan organization. And so um, those views are Senator Gillibrand's views, but I think we could also learn a lot from her on her voting plan um, about voting suppression and about the reason she's passionate uh, to vote. And uh, so we're happy to have her with us. And with that, I'm going to wrap us up and give anyone any last opportunities to ask questions about making a voting plan and why it is so important to turn out every last vote this year and ensure that people are getting out. Uh, so any last questions before um, we're done? Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Fill out your worksheet, go make voting plans with 10 people that haven't voted yet, because that is actually what's going to turn um, everyone out. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and let's get out of the vote.